Somebody shout unto the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Glory. Hallelujah. Now, before you're seated, turn around and tell somebody, I'm going to receive tonight from the Lord. Tell them, tonight I'm going to receive from the Lord. <laughs> You're not going to believe this, but I had a guy in Nashville call me, and I, I just made my first singing CD. And we, we've already sold thousands of them. If I knew it had done that good, I'd have been singing 35 years ago. Some of you may remember, I used to lead singing for Brother Shambach. First time I met dear sister Parsley was in the trailer behind the tent. I was sitting back there with Oral Roberts, and she knocked, and we greeted her. She came in, and she said, Brother Roberts, I'm Ellen Parsley. He said, Nice to meet you. She said, You know who my son is, don't you? Pastor Rod Parsley. He looked at me and winked. He said, No, I don't think I ever have heard of him. And she said, well, we want you to come to World Harvest to minister. And he said, well, thank you. And after you left, he said, do you think she knew I was kidding? <laughs> and I don't know if she did or not. But later he told me his message he preached her, he brought a pillow. Is that right? And I love that man. He was a godly man. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible tonight, I want you to turn with me. Musicians, stay up so the people can see how nice you look. Someone told me today, they said, you can dress casual tonight. I said, I did. I wore a blue shirt. Amen. I'm a working man. Hey, I didn't preach this long to wear jeans with holes in them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> When I first started out, I had holes in my shoes, holes in the seat of my pants, but I was believing for something better. Then again, you don't climb a tree stand in a three-piece suit, praise God. Mark chapter 5. Tonight, God's going to heal everyone that needs healing. And not only that. Some of you say, well, I don't need to be healed, but you need to learn how to walk in health. Some of you may remember, I used to be 346 pounds. And I lost, what, 130 now, honey? But I learned that you can't walk in health and eat fried food every day. Every other day, but not every day. <laughs> I grew up in the South. Fried chicken, turnip greens, cornbread. And that was just breakfast. With a big glass of sweet iced tea. Have you seen these guys on television? The duck people, whatever they call them. Guy who walks around with a glass of iced tea, you know he's from the south. Happy, happy, happy. What's funny is, I know a lot of people that are like them, which I don't know what that says about me. Praise God. I don't intend to be long tonight. I've, I know the Lord has given me this message. I had had the anointing on me the last two days. But one of the things that we need to do as ministers and as people to help others, we need to teach people how to keep their healing. See, a gift can reveal a disease or sickness. And the anointing, by the transfer of the healing anointing, heals you that moment. But not everybody knows how to keep what God gives them. Some people believe once you're saved, you're always saved. But Judas proves that's not true. He was handpicked by Christ. Numbered among both the 12 and the 70. But when he died, he died full of the devil. Satan entered into him. You can lose your salvation. People believe once you get saved, you're always saved. Yeah, and the devil lied to you about other things. You can lose your anointing. 
One of the worst things I ever saw was a man that, who was mightily anointed. But after he had problems in his life, he stood to preach and there was no anointing upon him. It was sad. You can lose it. We need to guard the anointing. I'm still married to my same wife I started with. We've been married, what, dear, 102 years, and it gets better. 36, going on 37. I, I know, I was just seeing if you know. Amen. We got preachers today, they like to drink. And I'm not talking about Dr. Pepper either. But if you'll live holy, it helps you to keep what God gives you. Can you say praise God? Mark chapter 5, the Bible tells us Jesus had just cast the devils out of the man in Gadara. They that fed the swine, verse 14 of the fifth chapter, fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus. Everybody say, they come to Jesus. And see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Fear does not come by the working of the Spirit, but fear comes from a devil that wants you to believe that when God performs something supernaturally, if he can get you into fear, he can try to get you to lose what God gives you. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith always goes forward, Brother Sumrall taught us when we were young preachers up in South Bend. He used to always put his car where he could go and drive when he was ready to leave. He never put it in reverse. I was talking to his son Frank the other day. I said, is that why you had two garage doors on Ireland Road there? He said, yeah. Dad had that specially built so that he never had to back out of the garage. He just went forward. Every time Sister Louise would put out nice plants, she'd come out and find them all over the ground strewed. He went forward, but he didn't always go straight as he went forward. Amen. But what an object lesson to you and I to keep going forward for God. Forgetting those things which are behind. Can you say man? We press towards the mark, the prize, the high calling that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Aren't you glad? And so Jesus leaves them and he tells the man, go home to thy friends, verse 19, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for you and hath had compassion on you. And then Jesus departs and begins to publish in Decapolis how great, or the man did, how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Now verse 21, I want this to get in your spirit tonight to help us. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and he besought him. He begged him urgently, greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. And uh, Father, I pray uh, for Paul Crouch Sr. His son called us a few moments ago, and I rebuke the spirit of death off of him. By your power, touch your servant. Give him one more run, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, she was lying at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Notice what Jairus said. Come and lay your hands upon her, pray for her, and she shall live. When Jesus comes, she'll be healed. That was his confession. And she shall live. Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, everybody say a certain woman. Now this is on the same day. And so we can see how Jesus ministered to the sick in just one day of his ministry. There are some powerful things that we can see here if we'll receive them. And so the Bible says a certain woman, say it again, a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. You have no guarantee that if you go to a physician, you'll get better. 
You have no guarantee that with new health care and new money that you're going to get well because you can't buy your healing and no man can heal you. Are you listening to me? But Jesus is the great physician. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. She spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Notice that feeling came after healing. Sometimes I pray for people, and I hear people say, How you feel now, Mom? And I tell them, Who cares how she feels? Amen. She's healed whether she feels it or not, because feeling comes after healing. And then the Bible says, Jesus, verse 30, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, or the healing anointing had been transferred from him to her. Now notice, uh, the virtue was transferred without his knowledge at first. But as that virtue or healing power went out of him, then he was made cognizant or aware of and had drawn on the healing anointing and that they had received it. Someone say, I'm going to receive it as well. I like how God can remove the middleman and you can touch Jesus for yourself. Well, the Bible says Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Now remember her confession was, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Jesus even knew what it was that released the healing anointing and transfer of the healing power into her body. For he declared, who touched my clothes? Everybody say that out loud. Who touched my clothes? Now, cloth doesn't heal. If cloth healed, you'd all be healed because you got cloth on. But it's the virtue that comes by the honoring of the confession or what she spoke. It released the healing anointing to transfer into her body. And the clothes of Jesus were merely the point of contact for her healing. Can you say amen? Well, his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Her faith. Everybody say her faith. If her faith could make her whole, your faith can make you whole. Amen. Well, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he seeth the confusion or the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly, professional mourners. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make you this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Notice what Jesus said about her, though the report was she was dead. Sometimes you have to refuse the report that men give you to receive the healing anointing and to have Jesus to do what he has already promised to do for us. Can you say amen? Well, the Bible says uh, they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway, everybody say straightway. 
In the gospel of Mark, there are three key words in this gospel. Immediately, forthwith, and straightway. And each one is attached to a miracle. And so miracles are instantaneous. Whereas the gift of healing, as the nobleman's son from that hour, he began to amend. And so there are different ways God can touch you tonight, but there are different rules that govern these gifts that bring healing and miracles. Miracles are instantaneous and are released by faith. Well, that's that's how you are healed as well. However, the Bible said concerning the noble man's son from that hour, he began to amend or get better. But I don't care how God does it. I just know he can do it and I receive it in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? And straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was of the age of 12 years. So here was a woman that had suffered for 12 years, and here was a girl that had an unexpected problem that came upon her at the age of 12 years, and she died, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man, everybody say no man, no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Can you say amen? Then turn back to the Gospel of Matthew, please. And I want to show you on the same day how others receive from Jesus. Well, the Bible tells us, verse 20, And behold, a woman which was diseased, Matthew 9, with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, She said within herself, If I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame uh, hereof went abroad all that land. And when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said unto him, Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith according to your faith be it unto you and their eyes were open and Jesus straightly charged them saying see that no man know it I want you to notice that all these miracles took place on the same day and then I want you also to notice how that Jesus references faith and believing to the uh, connection of receiving it is impossible to receive from God unless you show God your faith. Are you listening to me? Now, uh, the Bible says the woman with the issue of blood, as she comes upon the press, the multitude, those that followed after Jesus, she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. When she did that, virtue or power or the healing anointing was transferred out of Jesus into her body. And Jesus, knowing uh, that someone had touched him, for he said, who touched my clothes? He turned about to look upon the crowd to see who it was that had done this thing. And when he saw her, he said to her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Before he got to that woman, there was a man named Jairus who stopped Jesus as he came back from the country of the Gadarenes. And as he comes to him, he said, Master, my daughter lieth at home at the point of death. But I believe that if you'll come and pray for her, she shall be made whole. Once Jairus said that, then his words were etched in the hall of faith for him. You see, your words create not only your future, but it creates the helping power of God to operate more freely in our lives. Can you say amen? I can't believe how some people talk and they call themselves Christians. But Jeremiah said, set a watch at your mouth. By your words, Jesus said, you're justified. And by your words, you're condemned. Are you hearing me? And so Jesus said, what comes out of your lips defileth a man. Don't let your words bring a defiling to the thing you're believing for. 
In Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter, Jesus went to look around the synagogue to see about what was going on there. And the Bible says on the way to the synagogue, he saw a fig tree and happily he thought if I might find figs thereon, he came to get something from it. My wife and I were in Israel. I didn't know this. Some of you already know it. But when we were in Israel, we found out that that kind of fig tree, when the leaves come on it, the figs come at the same time. And as the leaves grow, the figs grow. So as he went to that tree, he was expecting to find figs on it because that was the nature of that tree. Are you listening to me? But when he cometh unto the tree, the Bible says there were no figs upon it for the time was not yet. It had not manifested and so there were no figs. And then the Bible says Jesus answered and said unto it. I've heard of people talking to plants, but I've never heard of people answering their plants. But Jesus answered the tree and said unto the tree, No man shall eat fruit from thee hereafter. And he cursed the tree at the roots. The first thing I want you to see is that when your words go forth, it works in the unseen realm. Not just in the natural realm you can see, but it works in the unseen realm. Where are the roots? The roots are underground. You can't see see the roots. They're not visible to the natural man or the natural eye. But the words of faith that are spoken, they work in the invisible realm and they accomplish what you have spoken them to do. And what they shall accomplish is the word of God made manifest. Are you listening to me? And so then he goes to the synagogue and then the Bible says, on the morrow. Everybody say, on the morrow. In other words, 24 hours went by. And as they walked by the fig tree, Peter, calling to remembrance what Jesus had said and done, he said, Master, look, the fig tree which thou hast cursed is dried up from the roots. Now, for Peter to say that, he also had to believe that what was underground took place. He was saying, I believe the words you spoke are working, and the tree dried up from the roots, though he couldn't see it. And so there has to be a recognition, uh, or excuse me, a recognition <laughs> or nation of the roots of our situation or the roots of the challenge we face or the roots. The problem doesn't lie with God and sometimes people, they're hard on themselves, but the problem doesn't necessarily uh, rely or uh, come from you. There is a devil that has to be dealt with. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, but Jesus said I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly can you shout hallelujah in the early days as we begin to minister they brought a young boy about 18 that had cancer in his stomach and was given up to die if I recall correctly and his sisters brought him to the meeting there in West Virginia where I was preaching and they were crying and the first thing I said to them stop your crying they said, but our brother is going to die. I said, no, he'll live. He's not going to die. And I said, but if he goes by what you're saying, you better go buy a casket. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you got to help people get their words right. If you, uh, uh, Jairus didn't say, well, here comes the report, and she's dead. Go ahead and go home, Jesus. Nice try. No, Jesus said, let's still go because of what Jairus said. He said, I believe if you'll come, she shall be made whole. And Jesus was not honoring the death of the girl. He was honoring the life that was in the words of Jairus. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? To Jairus, the Bible says, Jesus said, Fear not and only believe. To the woman, he said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. To the blind men, he said, To them, according to your faith, so be it done unto you. And so in one day, in three examples, all three, Jesus encouraged them to use their faith, to stick by their faith, and not to go back on their faith. If I have anything that grieves my spirit in these hours is that the so-called full gospel church church we talk trash we talk anything we talk the problem we talk about others we talk this we talk that but what would happen if we'd start talking faith and start putting our tongue on another man or woman stop talking about your problem stop talking about your trouble stop talking about the sickness or disease the devil is trying to put on you but you would say yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord we want to receive our sight we want to see it differently yes lord Lord, yes, Lord, come on to my 
my house. My little girl's going to live. Hallelujah. I believe if you'll come, she shall be made whole. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm talking about use your faith by speaking it. So I told those two girls, I said, I want you to be quiet. And I said, if you want to know the truth, I actually want you to shut up. Because they kept talking after I said, be quiet. So you got to get a little strong with folks. Amen. They're short-circuiting their own miracle. Are you listening to me? So you remember this. The boy stood in front of me, and I looked at him, and the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, if you'll curse the cancer in his stomach, he'll pass it before he gets home. You remember I said it over the microphone. Someone said, but <laughs> you've got to be there five more days. I don't care. If God tells you to say it, I'll stay there all year. Amen. Don't be intimidated by the faces of people, but learn to speak to the thing that you're believing God for. Is anybody here tonight in this tabernacle? Amen. So I begin to curse it. I said, I curse the cancer at the root. I command the spirit of cancer to go out of your body, and I command you to be healed. And I said, son, you will pass the cancer before you get home. He said, I will. I said, you will. And he left the platform. He was headed off the platform towards the edge of the tent, the, the end poles to go outside. When all of a sudden one of my men jerked on my coat. And he said, look, Brother Shuttlesworth. And I looked. And he was throwing up the cancer. It came out of him before he ever got off the ground. So are you hearing me? Four years later. I was holding a camp meeting, and his two sisters came, and they said, we came to tell you our brother graduates tonight from West Virginia University, and the king didn't take his life. He's still alive, and he will live and not die. They changed their confession. Amen. Jesus said to the woman, Thy faith hath made thee whole. To Jairus, he said, Fear not and only believe. To the two blind men, he said, According to thy faith, so be it done unto thee. We need to realize we have a faith that is on the inside of our spirit. You don't have to put up with the devil's mess. You may get a bad report, but God who is God all by himself, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The devil comes and tells you your life is over, but I'm telling you by faith, you got a brand new start and you got a brand new beginning. You got a hope that the world doesn't have. You have a faith that cannot be shaken. Oh, hallelujah. There is a God in heaven who reveals the secret things. He didn't give up on you. He didn't turn his back on you. He didn't say you couldn't have it, but according to your faith, so be it done unto you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All three cases, they had to use their faith. All three had to use their faith. That's just one day in the ministry of Jesus. But he didn't vacillate. He didn't change. He stuck to it. Are you hearing me? You know, some folks are going to get to heaven. God's going to have some things in his hand and say, this could have been yours if he had used your faith. Well, I made up my mind, I'm not going to get to heaven and find out somebody else got my big fish. Are you hearing me? Everything God has planned for you is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there hath not failed one of his good or precious promises. He honors his word above his name. There is a working right now. As you're hearing it, faith is coming into your spirit. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Faith is working actively in you right now. What is it you're believing God for? I don't know, but God knows he is God. Amen. I'm not the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost is here. I don't know what it is you've released your faith for, but I'm telling you, you're only one prayer away from a miracle. Are you listening to me, sister? You're only one prayer away from a miracle. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He never changes. He's walking up and down these aisles. He knows this tabernacle. He knows who you are. He knows knows where you came from he knows your name he knows what you're believing for all he's asking is that you show him some faith say yes Lord I believe like the blind man yay Lord somebody shout yay Lord hallelujah praise God I said praise God 
Hallelujah. I feel this thing stirring on the inside. What is it the devil's trying to use to take you out? I don't care what it is. Use your faith. The devil is a liar. Amen. Someone say, well, you know, we need more word to approach us mentally and intellectually. What you need is the faith of God in operation. Some of you need the word of God to bypass your mind and get in your spirit. Hallelujah. For your spirit is like a lamp. It's the candle of the Lord. And the Bible says that God, who is a spirit, is searching out all the inward parts of your belly. There is a great search that is on in this auditorium by the power of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of man is like the candle of the Lord. James tells us he is the father of lights. Hallelujah. He's over this thing and he didn't start you out to fail, but he brought you this far so that you can go the whole way. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to be in despair. I refuse to give up. I refuse to let the devil have the upper hand. But I say that Jesus Christ is able to deliver me to the uttermost. Oh, hallelujah. When I was down, he picked me up. When I had no strength, he helped me to run. Hallelujah. When I didn't know what I would do, he showed me the way. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! I dare you to raise your hand in 60 seconds say, I receive, I receive, I receive. Come on, lift your hands. I feel it coming closer. Hey! Somebody say, greater, 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 greater. Say more, 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 more. Say greater, 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 greater. Say more, 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 more. Say gooder, gooder, gooder. Basapatala mandaha. Hallelujah. Don't tell me faith doesn't have something to do with receiving from Jesus. Turn around and tell your neighbor before you're seated, I'm going to get everything God has for me.